Restoration Operator, uh, to assimilate uh, microwave uh, level one uh, observation and uh, solar induced fluorescence and uh, CIF satellite observation into the ECNWF uh, IFS uh, model, which is a uh, kind of Earth system model uh, for uh, NWP uh, prediction and also for CO2 monitoring. And this work was achieved in the context, I mean, in the framework of uh, EU funded uh, project uh, Corso. So I would like also to thank all my uh, co authors which are listed here. So if you can go to the next slide. Thanks. So a quick outline. So we start with this introduction. I will uh, describe the methodology that we use for develop the machine learning based observation operator. And I will show you uh, quickly uh, some results for uh, first uh, the ASCAT active microwave observation. And then I will move to the solar and uh, fluorescence uh, from the uh, tropomy uh, instrument. Uh, and I will finish by uh, some uh, conclusion on the next step. So you can go to the next slide. So some context. Uh, so this work is achieved in the context of the Corso project. Uh, one of the objectives of this project is to reduce, uh, uh, as we know, the uncertainties in the land uh, carbon budget, uh, which are quite important, uh, especially for the estimation of uh, the gross primary production. And at ECMWF for now, uh, in the IFS, so we are assimilating only soil moisture. And so we don't have any uh, coupling uh, with the vegetation. So the overall objective uh, within this work and our project is uh, to develop a couple of water and carbon cycle data simulation system in our LDAS system and to analyze both soil moisture and uh, vegetation variables in a consistent way. So for this, uh, our strategy is to leverage uh, data simulation, machine learning, and a new type of satellite observation. So this uh, new type of observation are uh, level one active uh, and passive microwave observation, because for now we are only using retrieval. So the goal is to move from retrieval to uh, like a more uh, uh, observation closer to the instrument measurement. And wh why? Uh, it's because uh, we can have a better sensitivity to different uh, uh, variables in the model. So here, for example, uh, vegetation structure, LAI, and soil moisture. And also, we get a more accurate representation of the uncertainties compared to which we will. And also, we, we would like to test a new type of observation. Uh, CIF uh, is one of these uh, type of observation. Uh, what CIF? Uh, so it's, uh, we know that uh, uh, this emission of electromagnetic radiation in the red and far red uh, by a chlorophyll molecule, it's well correlated with both GPP and the LIFAR index. And because the CIF observation uh, at the satellite scale, uh, it's uh, what we call the, the canopy CIF. So it's uh, uh, there is, uh, these two uh, components. Uh, uh, GPP and uh, LIFAR index. So please, uh, can you go to the next one? So for this, a key component of data simulation, it's what we call observation operator. So I'm sure that everyone is familiar, but I can just uh, define what we call observation operator. Uh, it's uh, so a model which can be physical or statistical, uh, which predicts the model simulated counterpart of the satellite observation using the Earth system model uh, variables as predictors. And uh, so up to now, uh, I mean, we've been using physically based observation operator, but overall, we know that this model can be quite complex uh, and uh, are associated also to large uncertainties. And the uh, machine learning, it's uh, offer a great uh, opportunity uh, as an alternative to this model because they are computationally more efficient. They are quite generic, and this can be applied, the uh, same methodology can be applied to different types of observation. And also something important for us is to be able to test quickly new type of observation, see the impact on uh, NWP, NWP and uh, CO2, for example. And then if we decide uh, that's uh, conclusive, we can uh, we can uh, put this in operation. But there are some challenges uh, associated uh, with the uh, development of machine learning. So we need to design a simple and robust observation operator because we, we apply this at global scale in a couple model. 
And so uh, there is this uh, key question about, uh, do we have enough information content in the uh, Earth system model to be able to predict uh, the, the satellite observation? And uh, uh, so there are other challenges that we can discuss maybe uh, later. So yes, please, can you go to the next one? So in terms of methodology, so we start with a training database in the observation space, uh, which uh, which is a collocated uh, observation and model field uh, uh, database. Something very important is to have uh, a good quality control and filtering uh, on the satellite observation, but also on the model field, because we cannot uh, predict uh, the satellite everywhere, uh, and we exclude, uh, for example, snow, frozen soil, and so on. We apply also an analysis of the theaters to, to try to, to select the minimum set of predictors of our satellite observation based on process-based knowledge, but also using like some uh, uh, machine learning method, uh, which gives a, a ranking of the feature importance. In terms of machine learning model, we, we tested a very simple model like uh, gradient boosted trees, XGBoost, and also feed forward the neural network. And then once we have this model, we can uh, train them, uh, tune the hyperparameter using a validation set, uh, do the evaluation on an independent uh, uh, test set. And finally, the, the last step is the implementation in the uh, Earth system model. Can you go to the next slide? <clears throat> so we start with some results with ASCAT, which is an active observation. So we use a training database which relates uh, ASCAT Bascator at 40 degrees with a model field from ERA5. We use uh, some localization uh, to be able uh, uh, to compensate for lack of uh, local information in the model. And we use uh, three years of training and one year to test at a point of 25 degrees. And on the right part, you can see a, 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 dry, a diagram of the feature of importance of the predictor. And uh, as you can see, LAI and some moisture in the top layer are the main uh, predictor uh, our model. Uh, and this is what we expect because we want to have the maximum of sensitivity uh, to this variable to be able to analyze them uh, then in the data simulation. So then you can go to the next one. <clears throat> Thank you. So this is a summary of the result of this observation operator for ASCAT. So quickly on the left, you have a scatter plot showing a good correlation and quite accurate enough in terms of standard deviation of error and mean absolute error. And also you can see that on the bottom right, on the bottom left, sorry, uh, we have a good uh, prediction of the pattern of Bascatter in the Leifert index and soil moisture space. Uh, that's what, what we have. And on the right part, you can see also a comparison between the observed and the predicted Bascatter. Uh, the global distribution uh, is quite uh, satisfactory. And uh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention this is a model with uh, four hidden layers, uh, 16 neurons at a global scale. So it's quite a, a big model. So we can go to the next slide, please. So now uh, for CIF, uh, so we, we have a different training database that we, uh, we, we produced with our last version of the IFS model. Two uh, minutes. Okay, yeah. And this is at uh, 0.1 degree. And uh, for CIF, uh, so we use a data set from uh, the TROPOMI instrument, which is a TROPOSIT data set uh, given by LSE. And this uh, data set, it's at uh, eight day temporal frequency. And again, uh, we, we had uh, two years of training, uh, one year of validation and one year of testing. So we should show you some results. Next slide, please. So I will go quickly on this one. Again, we applied uh, feature, uh, feature selection based on the process-based knowledge of CIF and what uh, is given by the machine learning. And uh, this is a list of the predictor but I can talk more uh, in the discussion. Can you go to the next slide, please? We also compare the XGBoost and the feed forward neural network, and we found a similar level of prediction of uh, accuracy. So for this one, we choose the XGBoost, which was easier to implement in the IFS. And the next slide. So this is a summary of the result uh, for CIF. So on the left part, 
you can see a seasonal plot at a site scale. And the, on the right axis, on the left, this is a sieve. And the, on the right axis, on the I mean, the right, uh, right, right axis, sorry, it's the leaf index. And the, in yellow, this is a predicted sieve, and the blue, this is the observed sieve. So you can see we have a good uh, seasonal match between the prediction and the observation, and also a very good uh, match with the uh, LAI of the model. And I will finish with the conclusion. <laughs> so, you uh, so the take home message uh, it's uh, that uh, we show that a simple feed forward neural network provides accurate enough prediction of bascatter and CIF uh, satellite observation using the IFS model feeds as predictor. So the current step, and uh, maybe this will be the next presentation, is the implementation and the test in the IFS and uh, having like a uh, an evaluation of the impact on the prediction of carbon, water, fluxes, but also uh, meteorological uh, variables. And uh, I demonstrate that machine learning-based observation operator allows to quickly test the simulation of new type of observation. And this is quite interesting uh, for operational implementation. And in terms of uh, challenge and lesson learned, uh, uh, so I would like to underline that the importance to have a model uh, which uh, maintain a uh, uh, maintain level of sensitivity to the variable that we want to analyze. So is, with machine learning, because we can have uh, overfitting and so on, it's very important to check that, for example, if we want to analyze LAI, that our model is uh, quite sensitive to LAI. And there is this general problem of how to represent the uncertainties in both the predictor from the Earth system model and also the satellite observation, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think, an important topic for the uh, So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.